I think it's fashion, period. I mean, it's, it just comes down to it. I started when I was 14 years old, and I'm 43, so 30 years next year. Uh, I still get excited every morning I get up. I was a part of that graffiti movement in the 80s, so it, was, it wasn't it was what it is now. Uh, it was the birth of, of a movement. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of illegal stuff, and, you know, we're kids. What you do when you're in fifth grade and in tenth grade and you know and all that is very different from what you're doing when you're 30 or 40 or something and so that when I was younger it was just obsession with drawing and, and copying things and sort of getting likeness and I, I liked doing it it was a, that was just a flat-out obsession and that graduated into being more and more interested with us that is looking at us and the culture that we live in. I was born in Newark and immediately we moved to other places. Washington is a funny place and I'll tell you the thing that was the first and strongest there is that the, the National Museum, National Gallery in particular, is free. So that meant that I could be down there whenever I wanted and it didn't cost me anything. And those kinds of things really opened my eyes to how you render things and how you see things. I was doing denim in 2014 before it became popular. People don't like just regular manufactured distress. So all the stress that I do is by hand. It's not manufactured and it kind of gives it more of a handmade feel. His name is Shari Zul, owner and founder of Zul. Pronounced Zul, T is silent. It's actually, um, it's actually my last name. It comes from Belize. Um, Mayan descent. So the meaning I put behind it was live to be known because it kind of answers all the questions for the generations coming up when they're questioning what they're trying to do in their life and what their purpose is, is live to be known, which all people are trying to be known, whether the craft, photography, biography, business, being a lawyer, doctor, you want to be the best at what you do. I've been doing this for about two years. 2013, I had the concept. 2014, is when I really started putting in the work in and projecting it. It started off as being a boutique and uh, I started creating my own designs and a lot of people were about really good feedback on the designs and I just kept running with it. Uh, I mean, you know, it, change is constant, you know, no matter what, no matter what industry. So uh, it went from, you know, writing graffiti, tagging, and now there's this whole birth of street art and, and you know, and uh, mural all around the world. I mean, it's a huge global movement. For me, it's changed to the fact that it's a career. This is what I, I'm paid to do. And I mean, you know, I, I'm blessed that way. I work hard for it. I think the fact that the world is accepting of a, of a subculture that was very uh, blamed and very, you know, for, for decades, it's, it's great. It means that passion always prevails. It comes from looking at the world around me. That's where my whole uh, subject and that's where the pictures come from. I'm not doing realism. I'm doing fiction. A lot of the painting is about the viewer. So it's about what the viewer responds to. What happens is as we live, grow up, whatever, we're bombarded with ideas. Ideas of things that might be where we have satisfaction. And it may be how we dress. It may be how we do our hair. It may be how rich we are. It may be how pretty we are. 
handsome we are. All this are, so we're bombarded with this stuff as the ideals. So this is a lot about the fiction of ideals. We are sold on the idea that that's what it's about. That's the goal. That is the thing that will bring happiness. And so the deal is, the suggestion is, all of this stuff is about where success, and I don't mean financial success, but I mean emotional success lies. And the question is, does it? As an artist, you have a voice, and uh, and it's okay to, you know, to say, uh, to speak your, your mind. This is a, a free country still, and, uh, and I think that's important for all artists. Everybody but artists have that power to, uh, to reach out and, and um, you know and speak up. What's good about this night is this, y'all. Yeah. We up here with the music and the sounds and the DJ skills and the MC. And... But I just want to start to show up with this word or these words. Let me let y'all know the arts. The arts succeeds where politics and religion fails. <laughs> Let me say that again. Politics and religion is failing us. But from the days of hip hop, from the days of rock and roll, from the days of folk rock, whether it's a spoken word or MC, whether it's Bob Dylan or John Lennon or Neil Young or Jim Morrison, whether it's Andre 3000, Slick Rick, Jay-Z, DJ Run, whether it's the photographer with the instrument documenting all of that energy, it's all the same energy, and that's what this ex exhibition is all about. It's not about me, it's not just about the people on the wall, it's about y'all. When y'all look at those pictures, y'all seeing yourselves. And if anybody in here think what's on that wall isn't in, isn't in you already, then you're a fool. Because we are all expressions of each other, and that's what hip hop is all about. I want you to catch the footage of this because I'm going to explain this wall one time to you. Now, real quick, folks, can you tell if they made a mistake? Absolutely not, right? Yeah. Because a five year old can take tape and finger paint and do that. You can't tell if they made a mistake. If her nose was out of place, you could tell there's something wrong. If his ear was distorted, you could tell there was something wrong. You could tell a mistake was made. None of this was projected. All freehand, freestyle, hard body artwork. Everything was done one shot deal. You can't tell if they made a mistake. Over here, you can tell because his raw talent is right or if it ain't right. Per one, FX, Bronx, New York, we out. The artists that painted it is Per, Gore, Bean, Dotto, Theo, React, and Coca. Per is from New York, Gore and Bain are from Sweden, Dotto is from Italy, Theo is from Spain, React and Coca are from Mexico. So my crew is pretty much international. Hi, I'm Ashley Zielinski, and I'm here at the Torch Gallery booth at Art Miami. And I'm going to explain my work. Um, these are my laser cut master paintings. And it was a collaboration with Google. Google's doing an archiving project where they're taking high resolution images of old master paintings and 3D scans of sculptures in the Metropolitan Museum uh, so that they're available to future generations should anything happen to them. And like what's happening in the Middle East right now is really terrible. They're losing a lot of their culture with terrorist attacks. Um, so I took the image of uh, an older painting. In this instance, it's a Gauguin, uh, a primitive painting. And I printed them out on the exact same size canvas as the original work of art. And then I took the code from the digital file and laser cut the code, the computer code for the digital file back into the work of art. My brother's a software engineer and we collaborated on this. He wrote a program that reverse engineers any file, like I input a file and it spits out uh, either binary, base 64, hexadecimal. Um, and I can then fit it back on the canvas. It's cut with lasers, so it's like really, really tiny. Uh, I have these two here. I have a uh, cast bronze that I 3D printed and then cast. Uh, and then I have 
uh, two in the two more of these laser cuts in the closet. I actually have my entire body of work here because it's being shipped straight from Miami to my solo exhibition in Amsterdam. It always comes down to the delicacy of the sensibility of the artist. The way you're looking at me now has a type of attention. It has a type, you know, and so that it's all of those things that matter. And when these things are done too simply, simply, or too broadly, or too cartoony in a way that doesn't catch that, I find it disinteresting. Paying attention to a different level of detail, which is sensibility. That's not feeling, but you sense something, and that's a that's that's this funny area that you can't talk about with art, and which makes it so difficult, especially in a magazine. In Miami, I didn't really use Miami as a base as far as their fashion because fashion is not really their focus. Fashion, here I try to kind of create a whole new look. Um, this year I kind of kind of solidified what I was going to do with the looks. There's no really a, a solid look in Miami. You can't really look at them and say, oh, this is from Miami. You can look at myself and say, oh, this is from New York or it's from somewhere else other than Miami. So now I'm trying to create a kind of a culture um, brings all a different culture to Miami where it shows what Miami look could be. Y'all can check out your smart phones and all your social media stuff because we're going to send a message. We're going to send a message to all those people that don't believe in the power of artistic, positive, creativity. It's it's funny because I never thought this would even happen. Like that I would be a role model and I do a lot of public speaking and with kids and I never even went to art school. So for me to tell art students what to do is kind of funny. It, it, I just do my thing and I exper experiment every day. You know, I don't think that I'm that good. I just do do what I can, the best I can. I take chances. I think that's important, especially in art. I try not to stay in one rut and do the same thing. Uh, I find that a little bit limiting. I, I forget that I'm 43 and you know, and there are kids half my age who work for me. I have a couple of as, uh, assistants and uh, now I'm passing on the torch and you know, that's just, it's really exciting actually.